This is Space Time Series 26, Episode 5. Coming up on Space Time, explaining the mysterious Fermi bubbles at the centre of our galaxy, Milky Way-like galaxies discovered in the early universe, and Beijing launches two more spy satellites as it continues its preparations for war. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. A new study has shown how the Fermi bubbles, a pair of massive gamma-ray emitting bubbles emanating from around the centre of our Milky Way galaxy, could have been produced by fast-blowing outward-flowing winds and an associated reverse shock by material falling into a supermassive black hole. The findings are based on numerical simulations reported in the journal of the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society which successfully reproduced the temperature profile of the bubbles as observed by X-ray telescopes. Similar outflows have been observed in other galaxies, and so this new discovery suggests that similar winds may have been blowing in our own galaxy until quite recently. Our universe is full of massive celestial objects which are yet to be explained. It really does seem that the more we learn about the cosmos, the more we realise how little we understand it. One of these celestial mysteries are the Fermi bubbles, so-called because they were first discovered by NASA's Fermi Gamma-ray Space Telescope back in 2010. These bubbles are enormous gamma-ray emitting regions which extend either side of the centre of the galaxy over approximately 50,000 light-years, protruding out from the plane of the galaxy like massive balloons. Despite their mind-blowing scale, the mechanisms by which they're formed is yet to be fully understood. And since their discovery, numerous hypotheses have been put forward trying to explain their formation. The most popular centre on either steady star formation activity or activity involving Sagittarius A star, a 4.3 million solar mass supermassive black hole at the centre of the galaxy and around which the Milky Way revolves. But telling these scenarios apart is a challenging task. After all, the centre of our galaxy is some 27,000 light years away. Now, Professor Yutaka Fujita from the Tokyo Metropolitan University has presented theoretical new evidence demonstrating how objects like the Fermi bubbles could have formed using state-of-the-art X-ray observations from the Suzuka satellite and new computer simulations. The new computer models allowed Fujita and colleagues to compare measurements with what they would expect from various hypothetical scenarios. The simulation centred on fast outflowing winds from the black hole, injecting the necessary energy into the gas surrounding the centre of the galaxy. Compared with measured profiles, they found there was a really good chance that the Fermi bubbles were being produced by these fast outflowing winds, blowing at around 1,000 kilometres per second for more than 10 million years. Now, these aren't really winds as you'd experience here on Earth, but they're streams of highly charged particles travelling at really high speeds and propagating through space. These winds travel outwards and interact with the surrounding halo gas, causing reverse shock that creates a characteristic temperature peak. The Fermi bubbles correspond with the volume on the inside of this reverse shock front. Now, importantly, the simulations also show that an instantaneous explosion at the centre could not reproduce this profile, and that further lends way to a scenario based on steady winds being generated by the supermassive central black hole. The authors point out that the winds predicted by these simulations are similar to outflows observed in other galaxies. This therefore suggests that the same kinds of massive outflows seen in other parts of the universe were also present in our own galaxy until fairly recently. This report from NASA TV. Using data from NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, scientists have recently discovered a gigantic, mysterious structure in our galaxy. This never-before-seen feature looks like a pair of bubbles extending above and below our galaxy's center. These enormous gamma-ray emitting lobes aren't immediately visible in the Fermi All-Sky map. However, by processing the data, a group of scientists was able to bring these unexpected structures into sharp relief. Each lobe is 25,000 light-years tall, and the whole structure may be only a few million years old. Within the bubbles, extremely energetic electrons are interacting with lower energy light to create gamma rays, but right now, no one knows the source of these electrons. Are the bubbles remnants of a massive burst of star formation? Leftovers from an eruption by the supermassive black hole at our galaxy's center? 
Or did these forces work in tandem to produce them? Scientists aren't sure yet, but the more they learn about this amazing structure, the better we'll understand the Milky Way. This is space time. Still to come, Milky Way-like galaxies discovered in the early universe, and China launches two more spy satellites as it continues its preparations for war. All that and more still to come on Space Time. New images from NASA's spectacular James Webb Space Telescope detected what looked like Milky Way-type galaxies in the very early universe. The new images from Webb are for the first time revealing galaxies with stellar bars, elongated fields of stars stretching out from the centres of the galaxies to their outer disks, at a time when the universe was just a mere 25% of its present age. Finding these barred spiral galaxies, similar to our own Milky Way, so early in the evolution of the universe, will require astrophysicists to redefine their theories on galaxy evolution. Prior to Webb, images by the Hubble Space Telescope had never detected bars at such a young epoch. In a Hubble image, one galaxy, EGS 23205, is little more than a disc-shaped smudge. But in a corresponding Webb image, it's a beautiful spiral galaxy with a very distinct stellar bar. The Webb Space Telescope reveals structures in distant galaxies better than Hubble for two reasons. Firstly, of course, it's got a larger mirror, 6.5 metres as opposed to 2.4. That means more light gathering ability, allowing it to see further and with higher resolution. Secondly, because it's looking in the infrared wavelengths rather than visible light, it's seeing through the dust, which gets obscured at longer infrared wavelengths that are opaque to Hubble. The new data is all part of the Cosmic Evolution's Early Release Science Survey, led by Professor Stephen Finkelstein from the University of Texas in Austin. The team identified another barred spiral, EGS-24268, also from about 11 billion years ago, which makes two barred spiral galaxies existing further back in space-time than any previously discovered. And it doesn't end there. The findings, reported in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, also includes four other barred spiral galaxies, each more than 8 billion years old. Bars play an important role in a spiral galaxy's evolution by funneling gas into the central regions of the galaxy where it can be rapidly converted into new stars at a rate typically 10 to 100 times faster than the rest of the galaxy. And bars also help to grow supermassive black holes at the centres of galaxies by channeling the gas part of the way. But the discovery of galactic bars so early in the universe's history is shaking up galaxy evolution scenarios in several ways. See, the discovery of early bars means galaxy evolution models now have a new pathway to accelerate the production of new stars at early epochs. And the very existence of these early bars challenges theoretical models because they need to get the galaxy physics right in order to predict the correct abundance of bars. Needless to say, the authors will be testing a range of different models in their next papers. This is Space Time. Still to come, China launches two more spy satellites, and later in the science report, new studies show that Greenland's glaciers are melting a hundred times faster than previously thought. All that and more still to come on Space Time. Despite earlier claims of wrapping up its orbital launch program the previous week, we now discover Beijing's launched another two rockets in the closing days of 2022, each carrying a classified spy satellite. The first to fly was the Gulfeng 1104 aboard a Long March 4B rocket from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in Jiangxi Province. Beijing described the Gofeng series of spacecraft as being used for commercial remote sensing services, for land resource investigation, natural disaster monitoring, urban development planning, agricultural yield forecasting, and public safety. However, military analysts say their spy satellites, equipped with high-resolution optical or multispectral synthetic aperture radar systems and electronic signals intelligence gathering surveillance technology. Put simply, they're designed to provide China with continuous reconnaissance, monitoring areas of interest to Beijing as part of what Chinese President Xi Jinping and his communist government have described as preparations for war. 
The Gaofeng launch was followed just a day later by the Xiang Tenno 2, which was launched aboard a Long March 3B rocket from the Xiaochang Satellite Launch Center in southwestern China's Sichuan province. As we mentioned the other week, Xiang means experimental in Chinese, and these spacecraft are described as demonstrating new technologies for space environmental monitoring. What we do know for sure is that its sister spacecraft, Cheyenne 1001, was launched back in September 2021 and placed in the highly elliptical 1,880 km by 38,881 km high Molnya orbit. Molnya orbits are designed to increase dwell time over a specific area, and it appears the Cheyenne 1002 is heading into a similar orbit. These specific Molnya orbits are often used by military communication satellites or those engaged in early warning missile tracking or signals intelligence gathering. China operates a northern polar satellite ground station in Kruna, northern Sweden, and this would be visible by the Xiantan satellites for long periods near their orbital apogee. The mission marked the 53rd and final flight of a Long March rocket last year and a record 64th and final orbital mission by China for 2022. This is Space Time. And that's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favorite podcast download provider, and from SpaceTimeWithStuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Spacetime store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Spacetime patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram, through our Spacetime YouTube channel. And on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash space time with Stuart Gary. And Space Time is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Space Time with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. 